started with one of the chairman's slides. John, thank you very much. <laughs> um, laparoscopic colorectal surgery has had an approximately 20-year journey. It started off with papers describing four or five cases and concluding this will be the way this procedure is done in the future. We then had the problem with port site metastases uh, when uh, it was not for uh, anybody, and it's now got an established place in clinical practice. And it's pretty much taken the same uh, path as uh, that what we see in, uh, in market share in economic terms with early adopters, uh, people then the early majority, late majority, few laggards, and then even a few people who haven't actually taken on laparoscopic colorectal surgery and have stuck with open techniques. I've put this slide up really as a compliment or a tribute to those pioneers, protagonists of laparoscopic colorectal surgery. The three speakers before me are some of the uh, chief uh, people who deserve uh, chief credit in that regard. These are words by Machiavelli. We've just celebrated five years, years since his death, and much of what he said remains true today. So they have steered laparoscopic colorectal surgery through the doubters, they have coped with the lukewarm support uh, of those people who, uh, who took it up but might not have benefited if it hadn't worked. And what they've also done greatly to their credit is produce the data and the evidence for the benefits that this technique has. What about uptake? Looking at uh, publications using HES data, about 84% of uh, laparoscopic cholecystectomies in the UK are performed uh, laparoscopic. Uh, sorry, cholecystectomies are performed laparoscopically. And uh, we've seen slightly higher figures presented today for the UK, but around 30 to 40% uh, in uh, Australia, America, and the UK are being performed laparoscopically. Whilst I'm going through the talk, I do want you to bear in mind these outcomes, which I think most patients, indeed most consultants, would, would rank in this order, with cure, complications being paramount, and pain length of stay and cosmesis being relatively less important. So the areas I want to cover are that there is pressure to do it. I'm certain it's more difficult than open surgery. That it's perhaps brave to say it, but I think the benefits are modest. That we do need to work hard at self-evaluation patient selection in the UK and that, as we've heard uh, already very, uh, uh, um, uh, very nicely from Mark, that training and, and practice are essential. So what about the positive pressure? I'll come on to NICE. It's certainly the case that if you don't provide this service, you will lose cases of colorectal uh, cancer. It is seen as better, more modern. Individuals don't want to be seen as the, as the laggards, inferior to their colleagues. And it is definitely seen as an inability to keep up with technology. So it's not surprising that the trainees and consultants want to work in the operating theater in the top left rather than my operating theater you can see below it. Uh, David highlighted some of the recommendations from NICE and I've highlighted uh, some of the same ones but added some further ones. So it is recommended as an alternative technique. We've had s some data about the training that's required. There's not a particularly good definition of the frequency that one needs to perform the procedure. And I think there has been inadequate information or inadequate uh, 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 detail, really, about what should precisely be involved in the discussion with the patients about the procedure and, in particular, the risks and benefits. It is more difficult. You do lose the haptic sense. Some of the movements are counterintuitive. And visuospatial orientation is definitely more difficult. Mark's shown you that there's a learning curve. So even when you can perform the procedure competently, it's not like using a new, uh, new uh, uh, starting with uh, with, with new dissection technique, using a new piece of kit, this is a completely different operation. And it's difficult to learn. So you need to do 55 approximately to learn how to do a right hemiclectomy and 60 odd for a, a left hemiclectomy. This was more recent data which I thought was interesting. It's a large number of cases. We've already heard about some of the concerns about conversions, 
And the learning curve is over 150 cases for conversions, 140 for complications, over 100 for length of stay. So you need to have done this procedure many times before you can provide the level of excellence to benefit from the procedure. Another indication is the increased degree of difficulty. This is a meta-analysis of randomized trials showing that laparoscopic colorectal surgery is associated with a higher intraoperative complication rate, both total intraoperative complications and specifically bowel injury. The Association of Surgeons conducted a survey in 2009 looking at the reported incidence of iatrogenic injury and a large proportion of the respondents said they had seen one. 24% of these were in colorectal surgery. And of concern, 7% of these incidences had a very serious ad, uh, adverse outcome for the patient and resulted in their death. And even with appendicectomy, there is evidence that it is more difficult. The one thing most patients would want to have, or would want not to have after laparoscopic appendicectomy is an increased risk of an intra-abdominal abscess. But the risk of an abscess is nearly twice that for laparoscopic surgery compared with open appendicectomy. And there is also some concern, concern I'm sure which can be overcome, about failure to recognize deterioration in the postoperative laparoscopic patient. Now, I think it is, may appear brave, foolhardy, ungrateful um, to put up a slide saying that the benefits of laparoscopic surgery are modest. But it is borne out by the evidence that's available to us. David Jane very nicely described the uh, results of the classic study, and there have now been more than 33 randomized trials in laparoscopic colorectal surgery, a huge welter of data. If we go back to those primary outcome measures that are important, and, and David, has, uh, as I say, highlighted this today, there isn't a difference in cancer-specific outcomes, that even in incisional hernia rates, and reoperations for adhesions haven't been shown to be significantly different. There have been consistent reported benefits, reduced pain, reduced length of stay, and improved cosmesis. And I had this slide up, but you've already seen the best study that has looked at the difference between laparoscopic and open surgery in terms of length of stay. And Robin has shown again, that the difference is significant, but in real terms isn't a great deal of difference between the two groups of patients. There is less good evidence for rectal cancer. There's a, a meta-analysis looking at 1,500 uh, plus patients, which again has shown no significance in cancer-specific outcomes. Uh, further trials are awaited and uh, David's already been through the uh, higher positive circumferential margin rate, which didn't translate into worse outcomes. Perhaps both open and laparoscopic colorectal surgeons should be aware of the date of Holmberger and be aware that their results perhaps don't match those that are claimed to be achieved with central uh, um, vascular ligation with reported five-year local recurrence rates as, as low as 3.6% and five-year survival rates of nearly 90%. What about self-evaluation and patient selection? The invited review mechanisms part of the Royal College of uh, Surgeons activities became so concerned about the number of invited reviews that they were asked to perform which related directly to poor outcomes from laparoscopic colorectal surgery, that the college felt that they should write to NICE and ask them where their advice should be reviewed or amended in light of the, sub of the problems that they became aware of. I think the LAPCO program has been fantastic and I'm a great advocate of, of all the work that Mark has done. But I think it is of some concern that 30% of the individuals who have submitted their sign-off DVDs were considered to be below an acceptable standard. And one can only presume 
that these individuals were reasonably happy, reasonably satisfied with their DVD, otherwise they wouldn't have submitted it for consideration. I've put up this data about conversion uh, from the classic study, but it is pretty much replicated in all the studies that you read with regard to laparoscopic colorectal surgery. Their conversion rate was high, and it has undoubtedly come down, as you've seen in more recent studies, but it was associated with a higher rate of post-operative complications and indeed a worse overall survival. We know from, again, good quality studies what the factors are influencing conversion. BMI, stage of tumor, experience, male sex, operating in the rectum and the ASA grade. And we also know that there are risk factors for complications which are not surprisingly similar to those reported in the conversion rates, male gender, older age, higher ASA, malignancy, and again, perhaps most importantly, the experience of the surgeon. So the training, I think, has been generally excellent. The LAPCO um, uh, program, the fellowships, uh, there are now looking at uh, competency assessment tools to judge specialist technical performance. And when surgeons uh, train, they all want to be the, uh, the, the uh, if they were in the RF, they want to be able to fight, uh, uh, fly in the fast jets. But not all uh, pilots get to fly the fast jets. Some of them uh, fly supply planes. Some of them fly helicopters. And I don't think we've been sufficiently good at distinguishing those surgeons who have got the technical capabilities to do these more difficult procedures. Perhaps with the next generation of surgeons, this will improve with their increased exposure to laparoscopic procedures during their training. We're all aware that practice makes um, Per, practice makes perfect, there are all the sporting analogies I'm sure we're aware of, but there's no doubt that more of you perform of a particular procedure, the better you are at doing it. And I think there is a bit of an issue with surgical practice in the UK. The average surgeon has three lists a week, one of them may well be a day case list. So that's 10 hours operating time, 30 to 40 colon cancers a year, if they do 50 of them laparoscopically, that's not very many cancer cases. And I think there is compelling arguments for us considering whether we have colorectal surgeons in units predominantly doing the laparoscopic cases. And I think that that is uh, perhaps, that argument is perhaps strengthened by the study from uh, Tom Cecil in Basingstoke who looked at an unselected group of patients with colorectal disease, and they found that only approximately 50% of those cases were suitable for laparoscopic surgery. So there might well be an argument for a unit having two surgeons who do the majority of the open procedures and two surgeons who do the majority of the laparoscopic procedures. This, I think, is me a superannuated canine, is it worth teaching me to do laparoscopic uh, surgery? Well, I decided, for me, it wasn't. I perhaps wasn't that old at that age. But felt that in order to do it, I needed to become an expert at it. And if I wasn't to do it and become an expert at it, I felt, like Robin, like Mark, I should be doing it pretty much full time. So in my view, as the nursery rhyme says, when laparoscopic surgery is done well, when it's good, it's very, very good. It is a genuinely wonderful thing for patients. But I have seen bad laparoscopic surgery, and when it is bad, it is horrible. So, to make sure it's very, very good, I think we need to accept that it's technically more difficult. I think surgeons individual need to know where they are on the learning curve for completion and complications. I think they need to be honest with the patients when they're consenting them in relation to their experience and need to follow the nice guidelines. I think they need to accept the very good evidence that's out there for case selection, complications of con conversion. And I do believe there's an argument for maximizing experience within colorectal units. Thank you. <laughs>